It's always great to start the year off with a great qualifying session and hopefully we get that tonight at the 2023 Bahrain Grand Prix qualifying session under the lights here at the Bahrain International Circuit. Let's see what our drivers can do for the first time driving our 2023 cars in anger. Here's your practice report from the Bahrain Grand Prix and Mick Schumacher and Keita Watanabe in the Toyota look surprisingly quick. Both in the top managed to reach at least the top four in the first two practice sessions. Keita Watanabe only less than a tenth behind Valtteri Bottas, our two-time champion, remember. So what can these two do? In practice three, Mick Schumacher beat Watanabe, but they were very, very close together. So is Toyota finally at the front? Have they made some big developments? Will their engine power upgrades come to fruition here at this power track? Around turn 14 we go, into turn 15, and Keita Watanabe has just been on edge. The car looks so fast in a straight line. He crosses the line, and he's second behind Perez. And the Toyota doesn't go out again. So at the end of qualifying one, Keita Watanabe, less than, over, less than a little over a tenth and a half behind Sergio Perez. Mick Schumacher in P4. However, Yuki Tsunoda and Alfa Romeo is out. Turn 14 now into turn 15. It just impresses me every time we see that Toyota go around. It just looks so planted, so quick, out of the corners, across the line, three tenths behind Carlos Sainz. He set a purple first sector, green in the middle. He's up by about eight tenths as he edges toward the line. Is he going to get over that second mark? Crosses the line, does Keito Watanabe, and he tops the session at the fastest time over Max Verstappen and Mick Schumacher really settling into that Toyota. So we're really seeing the true pace of the German driver. But is it going to be a Toyota Red Bull fight for the top of the constructors? We'll wait and see. Final corner now for Keito Watanabe. And now it's just a run towards the line for the Japanese driver. DRS open, cross the line, and he's P2. Purple first sector, green second. We've heard this story before, but only up by 7 tenths is Watanabe. As he crosses the line, where's that going to put him overall? And it's third. Third overall, and the top three are separated by less than a tenth. In fact, they're separated by less than five hundredths of a second. The Mercedes find pace after some poor results in the first two qualifying sessions. And Mick Schumacher, a decent showing overall. Is Toyota going to ride to the top? Here we are. I always love the beginning of a Formula One season. And we're back again under the floodlights here in Bahrain for the season opener for the 2023 season here at the Bahrain International Circuit for what is gearing up to be one of the best seasons of Formula One we've had in a long time. And here we go around the Bahrain International Circuit. One lap is about 3.362 miles or 5.4 kilometers with 15 cor corners and three DRS zones, the best overtaken opportunities into turn one and turn four. And here we go to the starting grid of the Bahrain Grand Prix and Mercedes look to be capitalizing on their form again this season. No regulation, so the cars have only been progressing forward. And one car that has progressed very fast, very quickly is Toyota. They look to be strong with all those engine power upgrades and they've made over the winter. So what can this more powerful Toyota engine do against the power of Mercedes? Here's the starting grid though for the Bahrain Grand Prix. It's a Mercedes front row lockout. Lewis Hamilton gets the bragging rights over two-time champion Valtteri Bottas. So the Finn is looking hopefully to be in a better position to make a, a defending championship charge. Watanabe third, Perez fourth, Verstappen fifth, and Mick Schumacher in sixth. Daniel Ricciardo 7th, Leclerc 8th, Sainz 9th, and Lando Norris completes our top 10. That is on to Fernando Alonso, Pierre Gasly in the AlphaTauri, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Sebastian Vettel. Down the order with Esteban Ocon, Lance Stroll, George Russell, and Nicholas Latifi get the bragging rights at Williams. Then it's Sonoda and Sato, the two childhood friends in Alfa Romeo with Nikita Mazepin and Joe Guan Yu in our final points, final slot on the grid. Here we go. The lights are ready to go out. Let's see what the first race has to offer. Five lights out. Here we go. It's lights out. And it's foot to the floor. And look at the Toyota Keita Watanabe off the line. He is ex he's electric off the start. Lewis Hamilton tries to fend off his teammate, Valtteri Bottas. Valtteri Bottas tries to go down the inside of turn one. He gets cut off. And Watanabe goes around the outside. And is he going to get the move done? He does. And the Toyota charges into the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Let's look at the race start. No wheel spin. Hardly any wheel spin for the Toyota as he edges behind a... Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton defends the inside and Bottas, well he's got, just got nowhere to go and Watanabe just has the clearer line as Hamilton is compromised in his defense and 
it looks like that engine power is phenomenal. As you can see, Valdibot is trying to go to the inside, but it gets blocked off by his teammate. He's not going to be very happy about that, and he almost loses the place. No, in fact, he is, does lose the place to the red to both Red Bulls. So that's going to be really bad for Bottas. We're approaching the pit window. You'll be on the mediums. Check your MFD for a new strategy option. Watanabe tries to defend the inside as he talks strategy with his teammate. F1 drivers are the best multitaskers and Watanabe fends off the charge from Lewis Hamilton. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Toyota driver decides to extend the stint to Understood. try and maybe Copy under that. overcut the, the Mercedes. Defending the inside into turn one he goes, Lewis Hamilton with the DRS open, but it's very deep goes Watanabe, defending against Lewis Hamilton, and Hamilton tries to get him around the outside through turn two and three, but he's going to get the run with DRS, and Hamilton is very close to the Toyota now, Toyota defends the inside, Watanabe dives into turn four, defends the apex and squeezes Hamilton out towards the runoff, they're side by side, and Peter Watanabe fends off the charge once more into the double left-hander, turns 9 and 10, and Watanabe goes wide! It's a little dusty down there, All it's been dusty all weekend, and Hamilton is up in the rear wing. What can the Mercedes do? DRS! And Watanabe defends the inside, Hamilton goes around the outside, and Watanabe dives into turn 11, and holds the position, squeezes Hamilton out, and if this is the battle that we're going to get all year, count me in! This has been a thrilling and throwing few laps. down the start finish straight. Will we see Hamilton charge again? No! The Mercedes pits and Watanabe stays out. So he's going to try to overcut the Mercedes in, in clean air and try to get the advantage. But hopefully, and we think he might will. Entering the pits goes Keita Watanabe. That's an impressive in-lap for the Toyota driver. Hamilton is over 17, 18 seconds behind the Toyota. So has the Japanese team come up with a masterclass strategy to hold off Lewis Hamilton. Here he goes into the pit box and it's a slow stop from the Toyota boys and girls. 3.1 second pit stop. Here he goes Hamilton charging down the main straight. Gasly takes the lead. Fernando Alonso passes. Perez, Giovinazzi, Vettel, it doesn't matter though. Here comes Lewis Hamilton and Toyota got the strategy right. Despite the poor pit stop, they've managed to overcut the Mercedes. Why'd you give up that space? You should have come in, man. Got massive graining, man. I told you. Okay. And it's gonna be some talks down there. Closing in on Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Ham and Keita Watanabe has got that superior tire advantage over the other drivers. They've been on those medium compound tires since the beginning of the race. Here goes Watanabe. Juvenazzi defends the inside. This is for position. And Watanabe gets blocked off by the Juvenazzi locks up. He goes into the side of the Aston Martin Sebastian Vettel. They're going side by side through turn two. Watanabe is going to get the better traction though. Pass Giovinazzi. He's going to pass Vettel with the DRS charging down towards turn four. Hamilton is stuck behind this massive crowd of cars. But Watanabe emerges from the... Well, let's look at the replay. You can see the Aston Martin opens a DRS and Keita Watanabe is all in the slipstream. He's got so much overspeed. That power, that Toyota engine just looks phenomenal. And Joe Venazzi defends very aggressively though. And he almost goes to the side of Vettel. But here's Lewis Hamilton. Let's look at this replay. As you can see, he sees the action. You can see Watanabe just got nowhere to go. He could go up the middle of the two cars. But he's got nowhere to go. He kind of brake checks Hamilton. But you can understand why he might have done that. Because he was... It, it was the very difference between breaking his front wing and Hamilton in the slipstream of Antonio Giovinazzi. You got beat by the Aston Martin or Sebastian Vettel. And you can see just, yeah, Hamilton, it's odd. He just seems to be struggling. So is that graining? Is that tire wear starting to kick in? Bahrain is a very aggressive circuit on the rear tires. So has he start pushed a little too hard? Charging the behind Fernando Alonso in the Alpine towards turn four. Alonso defends the inside, but Watanabe dips into the slipstream a little bit, tries to go around the outside of the Alpine. He keeps it just within track limits. It, may, it could be a little contentious. Alpine might want to debate that over the radio with the race director. And now, Watanabe, there's only one car between him and the lead, and it's out, and it's Pierre Gasly on aged, medium compound tires. Here we go, heading down towards the double left-hander. It's been dusty down there. So will Toyota manage, will they manage to get through? Watanabe is very careful through there. Gets on the power nice and early. Opens the DRS. Deploys tons of battery. Charging down towards turn 11. He's had some luck here in recent years. Goes around the outside. The Alphatari does contact. There's a little bit of contact between the two, but Watanabe keeps the lead and takes it from Pierre Gasly. Look at the replay here. You can see just 
audacious dive bomb around the outside, and that is an audacious move. You can see just how confident the Japanese driver is with the tire wear. Pierre Gasly, though, you can see, is he getting unsettled on the curb a little bit? There could be from the contact. Yeah, well, honestly, I cannot believe him. I, I, I let him pass. Like, what's the point to do such a thing? Here goes Lewis Hamilton behind Fernando Alonso and Hamilton on one lap older tires than Watanabe has got a lot of ground to make up and the longer he stays behind these cars the longer Watanabe extends the stint so Lewis Hamilton's got to get these moves done with the DRS around down the inside of Fernando Alonso and that is one move done for the down the start finish rate and Watanabe just looks dialed in on fire and Gasly pits so now Lewis Hamilton has that clean air four seconds behind the Toyota it's time to put the pedal to the metal it looks like we might have an issue hang in there we're attempting to manage it oh dear an issue for the Toyota crew we've is this could this be an end to Watanabe's probably it seems like a a deciding win? I mean, we know Toyota has expended a lot of resources to engine power, sacrificing reliability perhaps? They've had a lot of pace, much more than we've seen in recent years, and Watanabe doesn't look like there's much difference as we can see down the start finish straight onto lap 19, and that's smoke! That's smoke! Oh, and Wicked Watanabe's out of the race, and oh, he just goes diving into the barriers! Is there a hydraulics issue, an engine failure, a brake issue? We don't know, but what seems like a surefire win? Here goes the replay. You can see the smoke billowing. So that's a massive engine failure. And he's not slowing down. You can hear, uh, that being said, the telemetry does show he's hitting the brake pedal. And that's a, that could have been a severe incident. And that's a disappointing end to Watanabe's race. And what seemed like a sure win for the Toyota driver to start his campaign. Well, one man who has a brilliant start his campaign is Zazri Bottas. His the title defense for the third time finishes with a win at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas, remember this time last year, outside of the points was the Mercedes driver, and this is a far better start to a season than he had in 2022. Lewis Hamilton second, Max Verstappen third, and Mick Schumacher showing Toyota's true pace in P4. So when the car does finish, and it is a very good car, our driver's championship stays the same as Watanabe is our only DNF, along with George Russell. And in the constructors, Mercedes have a 19 point lead over Red Bull, but Toyota is up in third, back where they finished last year. Let's see what they can do. It's been a thrilling season opener. We saw some amazing battles, perhaps some new teams willing to dabble in. Hopefully Toyota can fix the reliability issues as we head to Imola for the first time in a few in a long time for this for this uh, for Formula One, and hopefully we can deliver some cracking racing to this thrilling season. But that's it from us. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.